suppose some of those reflections of the various leaders there echoed by the Speaker of Parliament uh, saying that um, Winnie Matikizela Mandela belongs to everyone and that not a single organization can own her because she was the mother of the nation. Indeed, uh, Kathy, something uh, that uh, several opposition parties have uh, said, the DA, the EFF, uh, the UDM, uh, Bandu Olomisa uh, saying uh, the same thing. Now, a short while ago, Kathy, uh, the spokesperson of uh, the ANC, Pule Mabe, came here. He was right here um, where I am. He was addressing journalists about what is going to happen next, including including a program that uh, the governing party will unveil as they pay tribute to Winnie Matikizela Mandela. Now, Tula Sizwe Semelane was here when Pule Mabe um, spoke. Just take us through very briefly, uh, Tula, what uh, Pule Mabe was telling us is going to happen over the next uh, 10 days up to the day uh, Winnie Matikizela Mandela gets buried. Sure. So we are basically we're getting a bit more detail in terms of the, uh, the program going forward in terms terms of how the ANC as a party plans to mourn this icon of the struggle uh, who was um, you know a stalwart of the ANC someone who dedicated her life to the ANC so tomorrow the ANC will unveil what it says is a 10-day plan uh, for you know how they're going to ensure that all parts of the country are able to mourn Mamwini Matigizela Mandela the way that they should. Um, and that plan includes the ANC launching a condolences book uh, that will be signed um, in terms of what Pule Mabe said, will be taken to all 53 uh, of the regions uh, across the country and basically be signed there. This of course is in addition to the additional information we got from the family, Titi Matanzima, who speaks on behalf of the family, telling us that uh, giving a, a bit more detail in terms of where exactly Mamwini Matikizela Mandela will be buried. This will be in four ways, north of Johannesburg, but there will be a funeral uh, program that will happen at the Orlando Stadium, which is just across the road from here. Uh, and I think, you know, it's quite, um, it's quite apt that it should be at the Orlando Stadium, just across from the Club Sprite River Valley, a, a, very, a valley that actually holds a deep history of the struggle um, against apartheid uh, in South Africa. But I wonder, though, Vuyo, in terms of capacity, what we're looking at, given the enthusiasm and the energy that has uh, been shown in the first two days of this morning period, what will it look like at um, Orlando Stadium? Well, indeed, we're seeing, in fact, as we are talking behind us, is uh, Patrice Mutsipe and uh, uh, his wife. They have just come from inside where they were speaking to members. Mr. Mutsipe, if you don't mind, um, uh, just paying tribute uh, to Winnie Matigizela Mandela. Well, uh, I think all the leaders have said all the important issues that uh, could have been said. And... Uh, she, she'll forever stay in our hearts and in our minds. I think in the church service that we attended, uh, there was a lot of very emotional discussions of uh, how she had uh, touched many, many people in, in uh, many special ways. And I think the, the important thing for all of us is it was always about the poor. And, uh, and about those who were uh, unemployed and marginalized. And, and that is uh, a very, very important message for all of us. But uh, I think those who are more qualified to speak than I have, have already done so. But uh, I think uh, she'll always have a special place in the hearts of all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. Mutsipe. Uh, businessman uh, Patrice uh, Mutsipe coming out of uh, uh, this house uh, right in front of us where there was a short uh, prayer for the uh, last hour, we understand. Now, Tulas, getting back uh, to uh, our conversation about what needs to happen next. Apparently, uh, there's going to be or was a plan to uh, commemorate Solomon Matangu. Now, the ANC 
is thinking about how it could actually incorporate uh, an element, a Winnie Mandela element into that program. Without a doubt, and I mean, uh, Vuyo, you can understand why they would want to do that, because, you know, it's the young people of the 76th generation uh, that drew a lot of inspiration from Winnie Madigizela Mandela. As you and I are having this conversation, I mean, listen to this. These uh, former Umkonto Oasiswe members have been in full voice for the past two hours or so, singing songs that, you know, We've attended a, a number of commemorations where you hear the M, former MK members in song, but I don't think I've ever heard it being like this. Um, I mean, we're hearing songs that, um, if, you, if you're familiar with some of the songs they used to sing in the camps, uh, where they would be, I'm told, uh, I wasn't there, I'm told that in the tradition, uh, for them to be able to do some of these recordings, they would be given an allocation to say, how many rounds are you, are you allowed to fire in the air? Uh, just for the purposes of, um, you know, the recordings. In fact, I have some of the recordings where you hear the sound of an AK-47 in the middle of a song where these guys, back in the days when they were in the camps, were promising that one day we will cross the border and get into South Africa and face apartheid head on. And so this explains some of the crackling sounds that we've been hearing uh, from time to time as the, some of those rounds have been fired. Uh, one wonders what, you know, what safety precautions are around that situation. So what I'm saying is I'm not surprised that the ANC would want to link uh, the militants of youth that, uh, according to many testimonials, Winnie Matigezela Mandela was able to channel so effectively against uh, apartheid, the apartheid system and the, hence the theme around Solomon Matlangwe as well. Incredible. I mean, the ex, these ex-MK combatants a little earlier, when uh, the rain was pouring, everyone ran away and disappeared. They were the only people left here um, pacing up and down, marching, and one of them was uh, on top of the roof where they hoisted a flag saying, come rain or sunshine, we have to do what we get committed to doing this uh, afternoon here. Absolutely. And the story of Mkonto Esizwe can easily be woven into the story of this family, the Mandela family. I mean, after all, having married uh, Nelson Mandela in 1958, in 1961 was the time when Mkonto Esizwe was launched. And basically nothing was ever the same from that moment onwards for this particular uh, struggle family and so these members of Umkonto Oasis will draw a lot of inspiration in fact some of the people we've been talking to who have come out here one guy that we spoke to yesterday was saying that basically after his first arrest uh, under apartheid when he came out of prison his first point of call was to come here and speak to Winema Tigizela Mandela and basically her words to him were to say you've got two choices you can either um, you know, uh, decide to go and study or you can actually uh, stay, uh, study or join the struggle uh, outside of the borders of this country or you can stay here and get arrested again and that's more than likely to happen very soon and, and, th and therefore that's when the choice, that's when he made the choice to leave the country and join Umkonto Oasis. So this explains much of the mood that we are hearing here but of course accompanied by the crackling uh, that does startle you and I who are not so familiar with the, the sound of these guns uh, from time to time. Ulemabe, of course, at pains trying to explain that uh, this doesn't mean that MK is operation is operational again. However, these are people who owe uh, a large part of uh, their of what inspired them to people like Winnie Matigizela Mandela. In fact, earlier on, one of those people who were at the forefront of the command of Mkonto Oasis, where Tokyo Sekwale, uh, made a stop by here and I think um, you know I've heard a lot of people reflecting on Winnie Matigezela Mandela's life I felt that his uh, reflection was quite honest and heartfelt and you know he talked about how he lived with Winnie Matigezela Mandela for about three years I think he says he was 17 years old when he stayed with uh, Winnie Matigezela Mandela for about three years and he witnessed firsthand the kind of difficulties uh, that she faced and the kind of torment that she faced at the hands of the apartheid 
apartheid system. In fact, Tokyo Sekhwale says the house, uh, the Mandela home, just uh, two blocks from here, uh, was pretty much a, a prison, um, an extension of a prison, because, you know, uh, the number of times that the police raided that home, searching for something, in fact, at times even they, they, they didn't know what it is that they were looking for, but it was really about the harassment of Winnie Matigezela Mandela. And then Tokyo Sekhwale makes a good point, um, honoring Winnie Matigezela Mandela and the, uh, what, her contribution to the struggle and uh, how she inspired all of them and basically stood strong. And in fact, she says she was like a candle that could not be blown out uh, despite the difficulties, but also says with all her mistakes that there were mistakes that were made. In the words of Tokyo Sekhwale, he says terrible mistakes that he says were raised with Winnie Matigezela Mandela uh, directly with her inside the organization. Uh, and he says what he uh, appreciates about those mistakes is that none of those mistakes, according to Tokyo Sekhwale, were committed uh, for self-serving um, purposes, but they were all committed with the campus being uh, the liberation of the people of South Africa. So when mistakes were committed, they were in the pursuit of that objective, never self-serving. That's and Tokyo should Sekhwale. be understood in that context. Well, uh, Cathy, we're going, as we hand back uh, to you, we don't know if uh, there's still more people coming to uh, this home. We we were told a little earlier on that uh, one of the people who was supposed to come here was uh, the Secretary General of uh, the ANC, Ace Mahashule, but uh, we still haven't uh, seen him as uh, things uh, stand. And with that, uh, I, I hand back to you in the studio.